traders will end up losing before they even start. Now, why do I say that? Where there's so much commotion around picking tops and picking bottoms, being the first into the markets, getting sniper entries, getting the tightest stop loss, getting the biggest reward. Now, one question I wanna ask every single one of you out there is why are you really trading? Now, I understand some of your whys are for time, freedom, to help support family members, get out of your nine to five. We all know that. But ultimately, the majority of us, or if not all of us, are trading so that we can make money. Now, the big question here is this. If we're in this business to make money, but we're continuously losing money, or we're finding that we're being stopped out before the market's going our direction, or we're entering too early, or we're anticipating reversals and we keep losing money, why do you continue to do the same things that you're doing over and over again? And that's gonna be the subject we're gonna be talking about today. Should you really be focusing on picking tops and bottoms and how to really identify your key levels and are they necessary? We're gonna go over three examples, but before we do so, I'm gonna break down what I actually mean so you can fully understand if you're on the same page with me before we take a look, look at these examples. Let's head over to the charts. So if you take a look at what I have here, now traders, I need you to understand not everybody is going to be happy about me talking about this. And it may be a bit contrary to what you know um, as traders and what you've been learning. But if you accept these as concepts and principles, then you'll really be able to view what I'm about to tell you with an open mind. Now, the first thing I need you all to understand is that when we trade, we all trade the same candle. And what do I mean by that? Well, when the weekly, monthly, or daily candles are bullish, any buy that I take is part of the same monthly, weekly, or daily candle, and any sell that you take is also part of the same monthly, weekly, or daily candle. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, if the markets are trending up on the five minute or 15 minute time frame, that daily candle more than likely is going to be bullish, creating those lower time frame trends, or it could be bearish and just simply retracing its bearish push. Why is this very important for us to understand? Well, the reason why this is important is because the candles that you are trading on the lower time frames are always going to be singular candles on higher time frames. Now, the way we take advantage of trading this is by identifying the trends that are formed from the higher time frame candles, meaning that if the candle is bullish, there's a very high chance that on the lower time frames the trend will be bullish, creating higher highs and higher lows. If the candle is bearish, then there's a very high chance that the structures of the market on the lower time frames will be trending down, making lower lows and lower highs. Now, why do we have to understand this? Well, during the pullback phases of any trend, you have to understand that from a higher time frame perspective, even if the trend is up, these pullbacks are now creating counter trends. The pullbacks, even if it's just a single candle as we highlighted here, are creating counter trends. Now, if you're meant to be a trend trader, you wanna be avoiding these trades, even if from a higher time frame perspective, you're waiting for the markets to come back to retest structure. Now, as I said, it sounds a bit contrary to what you all know and what I talk about, but if you understand the principles and concepts, then you'll start to understand why we need to avoid tops and bottoms. So on a higher time frame perspective, even if the trend is up, the pullbacks are creating counter trends. On a downtrend, the pullbacks are creating bullish counter trends. So in layman's terms, from an entry perspective, if you are pulling, uh, taking a trade on a pullback or an exhaustion or from a key level and looking for a continuation, they are counter trend trades. Now, how do you avoid this? Well, this is one of the main reasons why I decided to do this video, because most traders now are trying to pick their trades from the retests and from the retests here. 
or we'd like to call them key level trades. But the point is, how do you know that this is a key level in the market? And how do you know that this is a key level where price is going to respect and continue in the trend from the higher time frame that you're following? But there's only one way to really do it, and I'm gonna share that with you today. Because if you follow this principle and this concept, then what you're gonna be able to avoid is those stop hunts that are failing so many traders, being tapped out too early, market makers, getting in too early, anticipating reversals, trying to focus too much of your energy and time on sniper entries, counter trend trading, and being first. And there's one thing that I always say, you do not need to be first, second, and third is completely fine. So just take this with you as we go over the three examples. Every trader is trading the same candle. Don't care what anybody tells me, we are all trading the monthly, weekly, and for the majority of us, the daily candle on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. From a higher time frame perspective, any movement on those bullish or bearish candles, whether they be from the monthly, daily, or weekly, they are creating trends up and trends down, whether they're in push phases or exhaustion phases, they're creating trends. So that basically means for every single one of us, every trade that we take that's part of an exhaustion or a pullback is a counter trend trade if every candle represents a trend on the lower time frames. So what we need to start to avoid is calling the bottoms and calling the tops. And today I'm gonna to teach you how to avoid that because the trend that is pulling back or the pullback that is pulling back on the higher time frames is creating a counter trend on the entry time frames, which is this movement here and this movement here. And the reason why we want to avoid doing that and start approaching our trading differently is so that we can start to stop using these excuses and avoid some of these uh, common practices that happen in the market. So let's take a look at our first example here on USD Swiss franc. Just very, very briefly, from a 12 year old's perspective, take a look at this. The trend is down. That's all you need to consider. Now, when the trend is down, you have it locked in the back of your mind that the only thing that you should be looking for is sales. Now, the rule is you never sell in a push phase. You always wait for a pull back. Now, once we identify prices trapped in the area, we're breaking structural lows and we're starting to pull back. How do we know we're supposed to sell here? How do we know we're supposed to sell here? How, we, how do we know we're supposed to sell here? Well, one way we can identify these sales without having to be first and always waiting for confirmation and evidence is to combine your higher time frame analysis, which is trend down, looking for sales only, with a lower time frame, and then eradicating the exhaustion phase and then only jumping back on in the push phase. So we can see we're looking for sales. Have this in the back of your mind. We have a key level. Remember, this is the exhaustion. Now, no one needs to know when the exhaustion is going to end or where it's going to tap or where the top's going to be. All you need to do is wait patiently. So let's go down to our 30 minute time frame and take a look at this. We know that the overall higher time frame at this moment in time is trending down. Whatever you see on the screen, ignore. All you should have in the back of your mind is trend down. Now, once the market is in a push phase, you're never selling this. So you're waiting patiently. And then what you're waiting for the market to do is pull back and exhaust into a key level and wait patiently. Now remember, every higher time frame candle is creating a trend on all the lower time frames. Every pullback and exhaustion is creating a counter trend on your lower time frames. So if we have it in the back of our mind, but only looking for sales, what you need to be patiently waiting for is for your entry time frames to deplete in the exhaustion phase or the higher time frames, which is bullish trend exhaustion uh, exhaustion on the higher time frames and then wait for the market to start creating the new downtrend on the lower time frames which represent the now continued push phase on the higher time frames which is this movement here now notice where we have this entry it's not at the key level because we don't want to be first we don't want to take a sell as part of a counter trend we want to wait for the momentum to shift and only then jump into our trades 
once the new trend starts to form, creating lower lows and lower highs. How do you enter this? Enter wherever you want, it does not matter. The point is, if the higher time frames are, are sell bias, your counter trend trades from your intraday time frames have depleted from being bullish, which is the exhaustion phase, and your new sell structure is forming, creating your continuation on the higher time frames, enter where you want. Because all we expect the market to do from a higher time frame perspective eventually is do what? Make a new lower low. Now the point is, you don't need to be in the trade until price gets all the way to the lower low or makes a new lower low. You just need to get involved in the trend once the move has started to happen. Not at the top, but in the middle. And that's where you're gonna find some of your most successful trades. Waiting for the evidence and confirmation to support the higher time frame um, structure with patterns and processes from your intraday time frames. Let's take a look at another example. Pound USD. We can clearly see here that the markets have created numerous of key levels. Are we waiting for the market to pull back here? Are we waiting for the market to pull back here? Are we waiting for the market to pull back here? Are we waiting for the market to pull back here? Is this the pullback level? Who knows? But do we need to know? Well, no, we're not trying to pick the bottom. All we're trying to do is identify that the lower time frame counter trends have depleted. Meaning, looking at the structure of this market, this is our continued push phase. This is our exhaustion phase in the market where price is pulling back. And from a higher time frame perspective, we know after a pullback, we have a continuation. So the way we jump into this trade is by not entering here, or here, or here, or here. We just simply wait for the market to create the overall bias, which is up, not even having to worry about any of these key levels here, other than the simple fact that on the higher time frame, if price is going to continue up, we will eventually break these structural highs and from an hourly perspective, we will do what? We will make a new higher high. Now this is a one-to-one. -one. This should be your focus, getting your trade into uh, a risk-free position and then holding it. Seeing if you can hit some targets, managing your trades, trading in whatever it may be. The point is we never know when the pullback is gonna end and we never know where the perfect level is gonna be. But if we wanna avoid being stop hunted, we wanna avoid market makers, we wanna avoid getting in too early, then all we have to simply do is use our lower time frames to identify the counter trend, which is the pullback, identify when that counter trend has been violated, and then look for your entries. You can enter like this, or you can enter once you've identified price has broken these structures, wait for price to pull back, and only until price breaks above this level to make the new higher high. We don't know it's gonna make it, but that's what we expect it to make as part of a, as, as a trend trader, enter above. And look at that, no stress. We're just allowing the market to flow and move. Let's take a look at our final example here on gold. Now we can see that price has been trapped in this consolidation. We can break this down into, you know, its smallest structures and we can trade them. But let's just focus on the concepts and principles I'm trying to highlight here. Price is struggling, there's no real trend here, the markets are making low lows, lower highs, not breaking structural lows, etc, etc. Now what we can see here on the 30 minute time frame is price is starting to break structural levels. This is indicating what could possibly be a start to a new uptrend. But what we don't want to do is we don't want to try to pick the bottoms of what could be an uptrend. And we don't really want to start to try to identify where price could come back and pull to and retest before continuing up. Because in theory it could pull all the way back to this level, it could pull back to some of these levels, it can pull back to some of these levels. So what we wanna be focusing our attention on is how the trends start to create new highs and then only take a trade once we anticipate price to make a new high. So using the 30 minute time frame here, we can go down to our lower time frames and we can start to see something. The consolidation areas in the market, the previous downtrends that were forming on the higher time frames are now starting to create a picture. Price failed to break above these structures, we have a break. Price is now starting to create a structural low, a new higher low, because now we have a new high. Now again, 
there's no pullback here, so how do we trade this? Well, the point is this. If this is our current high, and we expect, expect the higher time frames to create a new higher high, then all we need to be doing is making sure that when we place our stop loss, we place it below a key level that looks realistic, and we just set our trade as a buy stop or a sell stop. And once price breaks this high, then what are we anticipating? The same thing again. We're not trying to get the perfect entry, we're just entering based on the theory that if the trend is up in the 30 minute time frame, whether we have a pullback, whether it's a small pullback, or whether it's no pullback, that eventually price will do what? Make the new higher high. So with that in the back of our mind, we identify a level in the market where price is failing to break above, we set our trade, and we have a bigger stop loss, no one cares here, we just want to anticipate that the market will make the new higher high as part of the new uptrend here, broken out of the consolidation and in line with the higher time frame, which is up and we set our trade. Now you might be in these trades for much longer than you're used to because your stop loss is bigger, but the point is you're going to have so much more success with this approach using these concepts and principles than you're already using now. So I hope you guys really enjoyed that. Now, it's not the easiest concept or principles to understand. I always advise you to make sure you go and back test this, put in at least 100 trades, but understand the point here. We all trade the same candles. We all understand how a trend works. Now you just need to have it in the back of your mind that when there's an exhaustion pullback phase, even though you're buy bias or sell bias, they are counter trends. Meaning that if you buy or sell at key levels, you're almost you might as well call it picking the tops and bottoms. You no longer need to do that. Wait for the market to move first and jump in second or third. Don't look to take trades at key levels immediately. Wait for the move to start. Once you're in the middle of that move, there's a much higher chance of you being successful with your trades because you are on the right side of the markets and momentum. Yes, you're going to have bigger stop losses, and yes, your targets may be much further away, but the point is, you're going to be able to make money, you're going to have a, f a lot less losses, and you're going to be able to enjoy your trading so much more. So I hope you enjoyed that. Try it out, give it a go, watch this over again, and uh, as I always say, if you enjoyed the video, smash that like button, subscribe, and until next time, wait, turn on notifications, and until next time, continue to trust the process.